ARC, <laughs> you said it's the hardcore that watches the Ultimate Fighter. You're talking about yourself because sometimes you'd be like, yo, did you watch Tough? And I'm like, bro, no, I didn't watch Tough. But here's the question. The sports Emmy winner, Ryan Clark, watched Tough. Dude, I'm watching the Ultimate Fighter on ESPN in primetime. Guys, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. And I think it speaks to the star power of Conor McGregor as Ryan spoke to. But it also gives people the opportunity to understand that Tough is still viable. Because when mm. we list these alumni later in the show, you're going to list a bunch of people that became champions. The Ultimate Fighter produces yeah. champions. And just like Dana White Contender Series now has a champion in Jamal Hill and Sean O'Malley, who's fighting for a championship, all these little uh, prospect-based shows give people an opportunity yeah. to show who they are to start and then ultimately who they become. We have seen so many athletes come off the Ultimate Fighter and hold UFC championship gold. This is an opportunity for more eyes to be on these athletes as they start their journey with one of the biggest personalities in the sport. But when you talk about Michael Chandler and his motivational ability, Michael Chandler got you walking through walls. <laughs> After a day, Straight spending up. a day with Michael Chandler, you're trying to walk through a wall. Imagine what he's going to have these kids Straight doing up. after spending six weeks with him. <laughs> What's happening? Bitch tits. Five fuck bitch tits. Who the, who the fuck are you? You little Bones victim looking thing. Fuck me, man. Who scalded you with a kettle? You fat fuck. You fat nobody. You little feminine pussy of a thing. I f pussy, yeah? Keep my name out of your mouth, you stupid cunt. Sick of, sick of seeing your f bone face. Scald you fat estrogen head. Oh my god, you can't understand what I'm saying, can you not, pal? You've got subtitles under the fucking thing saying exactly what I'm saying. So what are you saying, you little fat no-name? The big question everybody wants to know really is the likelihood of you guys fighting at the end of the year. What would you say the percentages are of that? I think it's very high. I think, you know, if you know Connor at all, if you've watched Connor, if you followed him over the years, yeah, I mean, you could say, hey, he's got all the money in the world. Or people say, oh, he's partying. And people say all these different things. You know the industry. Guys, guys are out doing their thing. They might be partying until the fight camp happens right so connor's not necessarily doing anything that he is wasn't has it hasn't normally been doing um ultimately i think this show is gonna is has gonna motivate him to want to come back his documentary coming out the comeback story the dude's coming back the dude the dude's coming back and fighting by the end of the year uh we've talked about obviously not we i i have no inside information when it comes to the novembers or decembers but we've heard dana on record saying november december i think it happens november or december obviously usually historically november is new york uh december is vegas um but i think the likelihood of us fighting is near 100 percent. the dude's coming back there's only one one guy he can fight and should fight uh and that's me and uh it's gonna be a fun one
Bom pessoal, olha só, o último dia na Austrália, né? Ó, agora chegando aqui em Los Angeles e olha só o que eu encontro aqui, ó. Adivinha, hã? Uma chance. E raro. Israel Adesanya. Hã? Chama. Uh, Israel Adesanya and Alex Pajara keep running into each other. Have you seen this? Alex lives in Brazil. Izzy lives in New Zealand. They're literally on other sides of the world, but somehow, some way, they keep bumping into each other. And they were both at a rugby, different rugby team events in Sydney. I think over the weekend, if I'm correct. Oh, Do you know what? Do you know what I like about that? You know what I mean? Obviously, they're very, very intense rivals. Mm -hmm. You know, and there was a bit of stuff. You know, because Izzy, you know, kind of mocked his son or whatever afterwards. So it got a little bit of heat. It got a little heated and things like that. But as we see here. Now it seems like it's all playful, it's all well and good, of course, it's competitive rivalry. But anytime you share an octagon or a fighting environment four times, look at that again. Look at him, he's like, let's get it. He should have shot the bow and arrow <laughs> <laughs> from the back of the TSA line. <laughs> yeah, no, it's yeah, great it's to see. But the weird thing is though, yeah, okay, so I think they were both in Sydney. They're both doing training sessions or something with different rugby teams. But even still, to be in the same line at TSA, at the same, at the same airport, six or seven people separated. I mean, what are the odds of that happening? That's just insane. It how is. their paths keep crossing, you know what I mean? I think they are destined for that rubber match in the UFC. You think they'll fight again? That's As a fan, that's the one that I want to see, for sure. I'd love, Absolutely. I'd love to see it again. I would too. And here are the top three funniest memes we found on the internet today. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel to keep up with the latest MMA news.